What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, August 2nd, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. the tired one at Tim Gettys. That's the most. I'm not that tired. Is this your eyes? What's going on? Because you're shutting your eyes and you're doing this weird wiggle thing over there when I do it. It's usually not how you do it. It's my happy wiggle. It's not real. It is. It is. No, it's just my eye. It's it's messing me up still. Still. Giving me these headaches. It's Have you thought about taking the eyes out? No. No, Why don't you just get far. wear glasses like me all the time? Your eyes never hurt, except for when you play too many no, games they, and you get they, destiny they, on. They even hurt then. They hurt then. What is your shirt? This is a Sayonara Wild Hearts shirt. Okay. okay. You're coming I to it switch. Was chicken wing related somehow. No, no, no. You always find a way. <laughs> I do. I did. Pa- I did pack a chicken wing shirt today. We're doing a chicken wing project. We'll Hell probably yeah. be Instagram storing about and talking about it, but that's yeah, for a different ain't time. No thing. But a chicken wing. But that's the story for another time. Stories today are. Red Dead's getting some role-playing stuff. Uh, Switch is coming to China and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. You can give us your questions, comments, concerns, everything under the video game sun. And of course... Then you can tune in on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Watch us record the show live. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, roosterteeth.com, and listening on podcast services around the globe. So many House- options. So many options. It is anywhere. Soon it'll be a toaster. Where Wi Fi just- toasters. Wi-Fi toasters. Is that a thing now? That's, That's got to be a thing now, right? Where you can Go put to Best it Buy. In. It's there. Well, so am I, is, is it giving me Wi-Fi or am I using my phone app to start making toast? Like I leave the toast in it overnight? I think it's the type of thing where you can just look at it and there's a screen that tells you the weather. Uh, yeah. See, I do want it. What, here, what I want, and I'm sure it's out there, but I've, obviously I don't Give own, it to me. I don't own my apartment, so I'm not going to invest in it. When I get a home one day, I do want like iPad mirror. Where like I'm uh, on the mirror and I brush my teeth stuff? and I can touch stuff and do stuff and see stuff. Mm. Yeah, I haven't been in a hotel that actually does it, but that's... I don't want that. That's too fancy. What I want... What do you want? Just something simpler, Greg. I just want one of those mirrors that have the auto not fog Defogs? Up. The defog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a foggy boy. Sure, of course <laughs> My yeah. showers are pretty foggy. Yeah. yeah. I'd like that to go away. Can't you do the thing where you spray something on it already and you wa- you wipe it off and it doesn't... I don't want happen? any manual labor. I want... It's fair. That's the Tim Gettys way. That's the Tim Gettys way. You know? Yeah, yeah. I want the sound too. Okay. Housekeeping for you. We've talked about this a few times in a little things and here and there shows, but it's time to start promoting effect- effectively. I hate Toronto. We're coming to visit you. August 16th through the 18th, myself, Tim, and number one games journal and a journalist, Andy Cortez, will be in Toronto for the Canadian National Exhibit uh, Exhibition, I guess. Uh, if you want to come out, you can go to kindoffunny.com slash events. You see our panel times are up there. Two panels a day at the CNE. Then we're going to walk around and eat all the weird food. Oh, I'm excited. A lot of weird food. Yeah. A lot of fried things. It's like uh-huh. a giant state fair, but it's Elise, like for Toronto. I think it's from there. Elise she, Willems, and she's she pretty stoked. very excited that we're going. Yeah, yeah. Everybody who we tell that's from there, we say we're coming yeah. to CNE. They get super excited. It's my first time. In Toronto ever. Yeah. Me and, you know, Nick wrecked it last Mm -hmm. october so Mm -hmm. you better get ready to wreck it with us oh i'm right i'm gonna wreck it there you go perfect Uh, again kind of funny.com slash events you can get tickets there uh thank you to our patreon producers blackjack and mohammed mohammed today we're brought to you by third love and upstart but i'll tell you about that later for now Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news! Four items on the Roper Report. A picker's dozen. You okay, Barry? You tired? Tired. Tired? It's yeah. been a week, huh? Yeah. A lot of work this week. No. Yeah. Not even done today. So much more to do. Yeah. What are you eating? To the wiggle. Uh, a cliff bar. Oh, nice. Okay. What flavor? Uh, I like the oatmeal raisin walnut. Oh, wow. The one I would never ever get. Yep. No. I'm an old man. I like the chocolate chip one. It's too chocolate. I like the brownie me. one. You got oh, okay. beef with oatmeal? I don't. It's there's too much going on. I, I like oatmeal. Period. Mm. Sure. Give me some strawberry oatmeal. Sure. Give me some regular oatmeal and brown sugar in there. Okay. I, I'm, I'm I, trying to find the source of the problem here. What are, are, are raisins? You fuck with raisins? I don't fuck with them often. Okay. Mm. What about walnuts? No, I mean I don't mind mm. a walnut. It's just like it's just so like here's it. a bunch of stuff that I wouldn't normally eat ever put into one thing. Mm. Yeah. Not my thing. Mm. Number one on the Roper Report. Red Dead Online is adding roles. I'll kick it to Rockstar. The recent additions to Red Dead Online established a foundation for the game's future with a range of enhancements designed to allow players to roam freely and experience the world in their own chosen way. 
Later this summer, uh, the world will evolve again with the introduction of specialist roles, unique paths of progression, each providing their own experience with tailored gameplay elements and benefits that will allow players to become even more deeply connected to their character and the choices they make as they inhabit the world of Red Dead Online. This fundamental change points to the long-term future of Red Dead Online, a world where players coexist in an uneasy peace, choosing to band together or striking out alone, fighting to survive in a world full of threats and opportunities as they build a life for themselves on the frontier. Here are the three roles, everybody. Become a bounty hunter for a life constant of constant action on both sides of the law. A licensed bounty hunter can track down targets and capture or kill depending on how honorable you are in your pursuits. Occasionally, a nearby player with a high enough bounty will also be a designated target. Progression will unlock special items like a reinforced lasso for extra tough targets, as well as intricate gun spinning tricks and advanced tracking skills like the ability to use eagle eye while sprinting, galloping on horseback, and many other special skills, items, and upgrades. The life of a trader is perfect for burgeoning capitalists as you establish and develop a business from your camp. Thanks to your trusty companions, Crips' knowledge of furs, skins, and butchery, you will be able to take on new opportunities to collect materials and produce valuable goods to sell. Increasing your skill as a tracker unlocks the ability to upgrade your camp with a weapons locker, stew pot, and even allow any canine companion to warn of impending attacks on the camp. As your business expands, you can gain new skills, improve your satchel, or add new assets to your business like hunting wagons to bring in bigger hauls and much more. A collector loves to explore the world for rare and valuable items. Look for a mystic traveling saleswoman in the wild to get started down the collector's path, searching for lost jewelry, rare arrowheads, and other treasures to sell as individual pieces of highly valuable sets. As you progress, you will gain access to tools that help you search, including refined binoculars, a horse lantern, and even a metal detector, as well as gaining additional skills to help you seek and discover the world's greatest rarities. As you grow into each role, it will evolve and shape your experience within the world and the characters around you, showing other players you how I'm sorry, showing other players how far you've progressed down the path of each specialist role. Uh, you'll also be able to play uh, and progress across all three roles simultaneously, or choose to ply your trade in just one of the roles of choice. Yeehaw! What do you think, Tim? Dude, I can't believe that Rockstar are as committed as they are to pushing things forward and it seems like red dead thing of the past yeah and it was a moment in time and it happened and, and a lot of people enjoyed it but then red dead online happened and it, it's i would say a lot of people would say it didn't happen yeah right yeah, but yeah. here we are it is happening in the background sure and i feel like even gta online uh had a similar experience going on like i feel like the online was just happening in the background until For a all long of a sudden time, until everybody moved the rock and realized millions like, of people were playing it exactly yeah. and and i think that red dead it's going to be a little bit different because gta does just have that mainstream appeal that it you just can't rival that um but i i think that they're they're making a lot of really smart calls here and and this this is proof that there are people playing these, oh, yeah. these games and it's these all this sounds like cool stuff that is being tailored to the audience that is playing right my bigger question is, what does this all mean for Rockstar and for the future? They didn't have a proper GTA this entire generation, which is crazy to think back to the last couple generations, right? Like yeah. the PS2 generation, we got three of them. Then the next generation, we only got, well, I guess we got two of them, right? And then here we have none. Next gen, do we get a GTA 6? 100%. Is it I think you get it early next gen too. Really? Yeah. Mm. I think you get it in the first couple of years Wow. of next gen. And then that you got to imagine is going to just be gigantic and have a gigantic online that has all these things, these roles and stuff taken into it. Right? right. Yeah. That's the interesting thing we always talked about with Red Dead Online was, OK, cool. What will Red Dead Online learn from GTA Online? Mm -hmm. Of course, the game that I think, you know, as you said, launched, it didn't have the fanfare behind it. I jumped on it. It ran crappy. I left and I never thought about it again until suddenly it turned out to that millions of people were playing. They have these crazy clans they are doing all these crazy stuff. There's a DeLorean like the modes are just so exactly, much fun. And exactly. every single time we've done a party mode for it or played like anywhere else, Rooster it's Teeth, yeah, yeah. so much fun. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, every bullet counts. Mode and all this stuff, just creative ridiculousness. Yesterday, in this yesterday we did the news story right that with the Diamond Casino stuff that got released, right, it was the highest player count they've seen since the launch of GTA Online, right. Wow. So I mean, like that's showing you what a good update can do. And like that was my thing of reading through Red Dead Online today. All this, I went, huh? 
that actually really sounds awesome. I, I love the idea of going in there and having a specialized role, something to do. That way, you know, when, we, when I turned on Red Dead Online, when it, was still, when it just launched, and it was still in beta, and I made my character, I was like, I was hopeful that this would be what would click for me, since Red Dead, uh, Red Dead uh, Redemption 2 didn't click for me. I thought making my own character could, and I saw the the little points of it where I could and it might go, but again, it was early, it was rough, uh, it was a little bit like, what am I going to do in it? Knowing that I could go in there and become a collector, and like that could just be my thing, and you're in, or anybody else is in there doing their own thing, that's exciting, and that's cool, and I could see myself actually getting involved in that, having a character that I'm defining, I mean, for all intents and purposes, right, playing a role-playing game inside of Red Dead, yeah. which yeah, I know you are, don't get me wrong, but you understand what I mean. Like, you wouldn't look in at Red Dead and call it an RPG. Where you're acting. Yeah, yourself. exactly. Exactly, right? Which is always the coolest thing, I think, about uh, blossoming online communities, right? Like, I thought it was awesome that when Fallout 76, is, you know, had a group that was running around, like, calling themselves, I forget what they were calling themselves, but actually doing the quest together and helping people out. People in there were being NPCs and giving things out. Yeah. Like, the way people work, the way there are, you know, posses roaming through this. I I think it was Kotaku did a piece, right, where they were going into this and they, they were doing a Red Dead Online thing and found a group that, you know, like, when they ride into town, they ride two by two in a single file, and, or two by two in a single file line or whatever to go in there and, like, look intimidating and shit and it's like that fucks that's awesome that's yeah. fucking awesome that people take it so seriously and get so into it that then yeah if you're gonna go in there and be like I'm just a I'm just a casual collector guys I'm just going in here to mine stuff I've just got my metal detector exactly. <laughs> like, what do <if> metal detectors <laughs> even look like back then oh man there was a it was a, a dividing rod uh -huh. it was a stick yeah you know, like this I feel you found I feel like metal joke. detectors were such a thing in, in my childhood where, weren't they in everybody's childhood? Yeah, I, that was the coolest so thing you could think of, right? The, the of like, cool, we're gonna go to the beach, yep. and we're gonna find treasure. There's gonna be somebody's <laughs> gold wash on it. We're gonna find this and do that. Uh, but to your uh, initial point of piggybacking off of this, yeah, it's been interesting to think about what Red Dead Online learned from GTA Online. Mm -hmm. However, it's even more interesting to think about what next gen GTA Online would look like and what it evolved. Like, what does that look? Are we? taking somehow GTA Online already that exists and like can you bring your character over and can you do all the stuff over there like or is it going to start from scratch with whatever GTA 6 is I mean it's it's crazy to think about it from the business perspective because things have shifted and changed so much since GTA 5 launched and how much sense would it make for GTA Online to whatever next to be free to play yeah you know and just focus like because at the end of the day they make their money from all of the microtransactions and the shark bucks and all that stuff, right? Shark cards. Eh? Shark cards. So if you if you take that idea, you just want as many people as possible that could be paying that. However, GTA is the rare exception where they can sell millions of copies of the game and do that. Yeah. So at what point would they still sell GTA 6? Maybe online's free. Maybe online is a timed free thing. I don't know. But... It's it's going to be really interesting to see what Rockstar does next, especially because like they're so committed to Red Dead still, and how yeah. long will that last? Yeah, and like they're, they're still committed to GTA Online, putting out massive updates. Yeah, the casino stuff. Years yeah. later, you know, it's cool. It's and real I, cool. I, just, yeah. I wonder when six is coming because even you saying the first couple years of the next gen, like that would still be a very long gap, huge gap from yeah. from five. But just imagine how good it could look. I think that's I, and I think that's part of it too is especially looking at the success of GTA Online and obviously with Red Dead continuing to go I think that's part of what Red Dead or uh, 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 Rockstar is looking at and this is me just pontificating right mm -hmm. is that obviously they've been working on a new GTA obviously when do you launch blah, blah, blah. if you can launch GTA 6 on PS5 Xbox 2 P, or they won't do PC at launch you launch on the next gen consoles right the, arg the ar argument against it would be of course well sure you can do it but the install base isn't there mm -hmm. right like that's not gonna you yeah, can't do yeah, the millions yeah. of units you can't have the giant thing but what's Rockstar's mentality now do they care about being hey we want a billion dollars in the in the first day pat us on the back or do they want to be the must-have purchase for the next five years as people buy these systems? Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's the long game of it. Of like, cool. If if they're gonna put GTA Online in this, and it's gonna you imagine be if as good, if not better than what GTA Online now is. If you launch in the first two years of PlayStation Five slash uh, next gen. You're gonna have it out there. It's gonna sell with everybody who has those consoles already. Then it's gonna you're, they're gonna see you're gonna have all these people jumping over from already loving GTA Online. Maybe this is the console seller. Not that Rockstar cares at that point, but what an attach rate you'll have on that thing yeah. of like think about the bundle you're gonna have with the PlayStation Five if it's there and how that's going to sell. Now, what if they just do a similar thing that they did last time? Cross gen. 
cross gen. I thought about it too. You know? Yeah. Or what if they do what I think is going to end up happening a lot, which is a game that works on both and just the sliders can go up. And that's and that's again where I'm talking about it in such an old fashioned way where I do I I'm still confident right I, my belief is still that yes playstation or uh, xbox games for sure are going to be like it's just the xbox platform it looks better on the new xbox but you can still play it on your old xbox yeah. right and i don't know if playstation is going to do that too and be there obviously it's going to be backwards compatible but like is it forwards compatible if that makes sense you know me as a fran playstation for me and fran were talking uh a couple months ago i think at this point and we we're talking about halo infinite and how it's yeah. still being marketed as an xbox one game yeah. and uh, they said it was next gen as well and then we were talking about how, what we think that's going to end up looking like and i was saying like has it been con confirmed that it's multiple SKUs, or could it just be one game that, that works in both and like the you're wrong was like giving me a lot of conflicting information but i wonder you're wrong me let me know now if there is has been an update on that okay um if because i'm not that deep into the you know xbox like nitty-gritty news stuff but um because i feel like that would be the ultimate way to move forward in the, the next generations if you're going to have any of this this cross stuff is just have the one and then yes you'll just be able to download a patch just like you can now with xbox one x enhanced things ps4 pro enhanced things yeah where it's the same game but you can have it better if you have the right hardware yeah um because yeah like gta still does need the install base you need that the, the group of people that even can play the thing yeah but you're making a good point of they're gonna buy this game no matter what yeah for years and you might rockstar of course would want to get in there early to Get on the top of the NPD charts and stay and there. Stay there forever. Yeah. Right. Just stay there forever. Mm. It'll be interesting to mm -hmm. see. Yeah. There are, I think the fact that it's, I don't think it's going to be a traditional console generation next time around or a traditional console launch makes it interesting. Yeah. Where I could, yeah. I, I would think if you're Rockstar talking about, especially what we're talking about, you'd want it to go the other way where it's not, it's not a uh, forwards compatible or whatever. So you do launch a PlayStation 4, Xbox One version of GTA, let that dominate. And then, yeah, two years into the cycle, okay, let's drop the, you know, drop, or drop a one for the next gen in. You know, bank money like they did with GTA Five, mm. but we'll see. That's another option too. Yeah, double dip. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? Because uh, kind of funny. Com slash you're wrong. I'm not. I'm pr I'm bright on this right. Like PS3 slash 360 GTA Online servers are not the same as PS4 slash Xbox One servers, right? I don't know. Like PlayStation Three isn't playing with PlayStation Four. It's just everybody on their own platform, right? Kind of funny. Com slash you're wrong. Number two on the Roper Report. Are you ready? Are you ready, yes, baby? Yes, I am. Nintendo and Tencent are bringing Switch to China. This is Sam Byford. Uh, Barrett, give me a search because I am off my game today and did not write down where Sam it works. Uh, at a press event at the China Joy Gaming Con Con Conference in Shanghai today, Tencent and Nintendo announced the first details of their strategy for releasing the Nintendo Switch console in China. The Chinese internet giant will be providing cloud services and servers for the Switch's online platform in China, as well as localizing Nintendo's games into simplified Chinese. Titles like Super Mario Odyssey and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild have already been announced, with more on the way. The Switch's eShop store will also be modified so that users can buy games with Tencent's hugely popper, popular WeChat payment system. The company's collaboration was first revealed in April, when Tencent won initial approval from... Guangdong authorities to start selling the switch what is still not known is when the switch will actually be released in China or how much it'll cost there are still various layers of regulatory approval that Nintendo and Tencent need to work their way through before the launch can take place but the potential upside is huge <coughs> although China is the world's biggest gaming market almost all of that is accounted for by smartphones and PCs console manufacturers have only legally been able to sell their hardware in the country for a few years following a ban first implemented in 2000 the PlayStation 4 became the first current generation console to be released in China in 2015 Tim say anything <coughs> Say anything. Talk! Just talk! Uh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. This comes from The Verge. The Verge, thank yeah. you very much. Tencent may seem to be the ideal partner for Nintendo today, putting the J Japanese giant in the best position to navigate cultural and bureaucratic, bureaucratic barriers. Aside from its dominance with WeChat and its major investments in Western game companies like Riot and Epic, Tencent is responsible for some of the biggest games in China and the world beyond, like Honor of Kings and, or, uh, Honor of Kings and PUBG Mobile. Even Tencent comes with risks in China, however. The company has thrown into the company was thrown into chaos last year when the government stopped approving new game releases, subsequently leaving Tencent out when the de facto ban was lifted. Tencent's most notable game release since then has been an outwardly patriotic PUBG clone that the company is allowed to monetize, unlike the original game that it was forced sh to shut down. 
Is this going to be a big deal? I don't know. Uh, so I'm looking into into some China game facts. Okay. Some charts and Good. stuff. Give me some China game and, facts. And uh, it's interesting looking at this. So this big green bit is PC and MMO mm-hmm. stuff. This starts from 2015, so it is a little bit dated okay. because this was the first year that the ban was lifted. For pay- yeah. Um, for, for console games. The blue part right here is uh-huh. console games. Okay. Very little. Very, very, very Point four small billion. Um, bit of this whole Pie. gaming thing going on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nintendo Switch right now, as of 2019 in March, uh, we're looking at about 35 million Switches sold. I feel like it being in any territory, obviously, especially a giant one like China, yeah. like that's only going to be good for that number uh, going up. But how many games are going to come with it and what's going to be allowed and what games are going to be banned and, and where does that all go down? Nintendo's in a weird position that I feel is fairly unique compared to the other guys that it, they don't need that many games to sell the consoles especially at this point with the Switch having Mario Kart, Odyssey, Smash, Breath of the Wild, like so many games that I feel people would be like, you know, it's worth buying just for that. Yeah. Um. So I wonder how many of those even, how many first party Nintendo games would be released in China alongside the console because uh, especially with the, the light coming out it's like this is a, a perfect time for a new territory to be able to latch on and adopt, especially with Pokemon coming out. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. Uh, you know, obviously Tencent always making moves, always in the news, in um, hand, hands in so many different pots. Especially pies. China. They're all over China. Especially in China. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of China, Greg Way, uh, this is not its own news story, but I put it in here. I put it similarly. The Creative Assembly Limited, part of Sega Europe, LTD, also announced today a long-term partnership with NetEase Incorporated, one of China's leading internet and online game service providers, which will see Total War published in China. NetEase Incorporated has secured rights to publish the franchise's award-winning historical catalog up to and including the wildly successful Total War Three Kingdoms. In addition, the announcement included a tease for the upcoming Total War Elysium, a brand new collectible card game targeting the initial release on PC and mobile in China. Mm. A lot of people in China, Tim. Yeah, people want to buy in their games. I mean, it's interesting. So, looking at this, I'm looking at the history of video gaming in China. Thank Wikipedia. you, good. I'm sure it's a short read. Uh, no, God, no. Uh, it says, whereas in 2017, around 9,600 new games were approved, only around 1,900 were approved within 2018. Tencent had been one of the top 10 companies in the world at the start of 2018, but by October, its stock had dropped in value by 40%, an estimated $230 billion, and it knocked the company out of the top 10. So it's like it's interesting that just these choices China can make can completely fuck people. Yeah. Fuck this is I mean when over. this was happening, remember this is why it was on Games Daily. I was like, I don't know much about China and I don't know much about gaming in China. However, if Tencent is can't publish games there, remember Tencent is involved with all your favorite companies. So if that domino falls, it's going to be chaos. Yeah. If everybody's going to be in trouble, and you see it here as well, like what that'll do to, if that was to happen again, right? What that would do to Nintendo stock if suddenly there was all these switches they couldn't sell. I mean, Apple attributed revenue loss in the fourth quarter of 2018 to China's approval freeze, which had also had effects on mobile gaming apps due to Tencent. Yeah, see, they're interesting. Yeah, doing a lot of stuff, but I'm the they're same. one giant pillar that can screw everything up when they fall. Speaking of a giant pillar falling, number three, GameStop. Laid off 50 managers. This is Gama Sutra. U.S. video game retailer GameStop has laid off over 50 field leaders, which includes regional managers, district managers, HR staff, and loss prevention managers. An internal email leaked on Twitter confirmed the news, with the company explaining the move as part of the on its ongoing GameStop reboot transform- transformation initiative. The struggling retailer is currently attempting to reduce its cost structure and streamline its business so it can free up cash for reinvestment. Quote, unfortunately, with these changes, there are more than 50 field leaders who have been impacted and will be leaving the GameStop team. This includes regional, direct HR, and LP leaders. These leaders will be missed, and we wish them success in their future endeavors, the email reads. These decisions are not easy, but necessary to help us reduce costs to enable investment in revenue-driving initiatives that will help grow the business once again. It's the latest in a series of bad news days for the company, which back in June saw its share price hit a 16-year low after disappointing quarterly results due to declining hardware and software sales. Prior to that, GameStop COO and CFO Rob Lloyd stepped down during an executive reshuffle, and the company also closed down its ThinkGeek website in another bid to reduce costs. Oh, I missed that. Think geek bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good a good call out and call back to on the subreddit the other day and maybe a week ago a couple weeks ago now somebody put out man it's a good thing greg didn't buy gamestop stock because when this is all happening i was like 
I don't. I was talking to Kevin. I don't know shit about the stock market, but and I wouldn't buy stock because we cover all this shit and yada yada yada. But if I was, I would think this would be the time to buy GameStop because it's only got room to go up, right? And it's only gone down <laughs> since yeah, I said yeah, that. Yeah. Like it's the continual fall. Man, I mean, obviously, it, it's very sad for the people. Of course, lost of course, jobs. yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to make light of um, 50 people not having jobs. But, but you know, it's just with GameStop, they, I. I what what's this reboot going to do? What's it going to be? I mean, I think I, do, have you are you do you have you read about it? Have you heard about yeah. it? Like were you on the show where we talk about on it the like show they about ta- it, they brought I, in the architects articles. and they're trying to make like, you know, more communal game stops, which is what I had pitched when this was initially starting to seem rumblings on it. I just feel like it's too late. Yeah. And I don't and I don't mean to count them out cuz I'm the guy who also when when Vivendi was breathing down Ubisoft's neck, I was like, it's over. Ubisoft won't be able to fight them off. Impossible. And yeah. Yves Gilmore said, fuck you, Greg Miller. I think these are very wrong. different things, though. Right? Of, of course, like, of with, course, with of course. With GameStop, it's like it's, everything around them has changed, and yeah. they took way too long to adapt to those changes, and I feel they made some short-term decisions yeah. uh, that would have paid off. Like a lot of the, the more merch-based um, changes that they made to their stores made sense to keep their finances up at yeah, that point. Keep but them that going was a year or two. That was exactly that wasn't building a future that they can rely on uh, with where video games are going now and where video games are currently. It's yeah, like yeah. it's no longer the future. It's just when you look at this, their the digital is here in a very big way, and it's taking up more and more of the percentage of people buying games, playing games, all of that. So GameStop really would need to do something creative uh, to be able to keep. It's many, many, many stores. Like GameStop is a fixture in malls, cities, right? In strip malls, malls. It, it, it is in. You drive by a Smashburger, you're like, why did they rip off the logo? Are they owned by exactly, the same people? Exactly. Yeah. It's like it, it really is something that if you drive by a mall, you can expect there to be a GameStop in there, and it's like that. I always love the twofer when you're at a GameStop, but you can see another GameStop across the way. Like, yeah, yeah it's that's insane, cool. man. There was there was a point uh, when they they were gobbling up everybody, and they bought the Funko Land and EB Games yeah, yeah. that. Uh, at Ceremony, there was literally four Game Stops wow. within uh, three blocks. Because I, I, I just always knew the the one downtown, like way back when, where uh, there was two, like literally around the corner from each other. It it's so weird. weird. Yeah, but and I mean, that's we, why they're in this situation. I, that's the thing that we've seen those kind of like. There's not four anymore. Yeah. Now there's two. That's it. And now yeah. there's only one downtown. And it's like slowly they all started to to just dwindle, and it's. It makes sense, right? And also, that was unnecessary. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and a big reason was there's a lot of malls next to each other there. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I just think they're too, uh, my when we were talking about this last time, it's still where my head's at. I think they're just too overextended to cut back and do it. I think the idea of it's what we've talked about before and what we we're talking about this week, even with the esports space in malls, right? Like making communal gaming spaces making uh, it more than just a store more than just an arcade it's a reason you're all going there on friday night you're all doing something together you're all changing i mean like that could be a vision but i just don't think gamestop's gonna be able to say oh cool could we have to cut 30 to 45 percent of our stores now the layoffs are in the hundreds right and now and then we're gonna close all this shit uh, we're gonna get out of that and then we're gonna rebrand and redo it's just like yeah and e- even that it's like that's a beautiful idea of course but it's like that reminds me a lot about like cards and comic shops where it's like you know there is the community aspect to that of every night we're gonna go play Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever it is yeah um, and that's great but like that is that's a niche audience of course there, of course there's a reason that the like East not esports cafes, uh, but you know what I'm talking about, like e cafes, like yeah, yeah. internet cafes, uh, internet cafes uh, aren't what they used to be because everyone has internet anywhere. Yeah, totally. It's not like a novelty to be able to link up computers and play with people because we can play on the internet. You yeah. know, but I don't know. It's I can't imagine a world without GameStop, but. It's gonna happen. We're hurtling towards yeah, it, right? Exactly. Yeah, and I think it's it was one of those things. I remember years and years and years and years ago, the writing being on the wall, and it's what you're talking about, right? They just they made short term gains and decisions, I think, rather than under getting really ahead of it. Not to mention, I don't know. Obviously, it's easy to sit here and armchair quarterback the entire situation. Being a brick and mortar shop and seeing that online stuff was coming to consoles and we're all buying our games there, like. I don't know if I would have been able to sit there and go, here's how I'm gonna here's how I'm gonna save GameStop and really yeah. future proof it. I don't even know oh, I mean, what, what, what the fuck would the you even there. do? I don't even know. I think again it's closed down a bunch of shops and do this, but their answer of selling gift cards there, right, and download codes at the counter wasn't a great fix either. I really think like I was saying, it's a lot of short term decisions that were made because even for the the hardcore gamers that, you know, uh buy games and actively are going to GameStops to buy stuff, like 
I feel like more often than not, when I've went to a GameStop to buy something, they don't have what I'm looking for. And it's a better shot for me to go to a Best Buy if I don't have time to get it on Amazon. You know, it's like the, yeah. it, GameStop should be my best bet, power to the players, to get a video game. And I feel like any like with Fire Emblem even now, like I've seen everybody's having issues finding copies of it. Oh, That's the really? Nintendo thing for not sending okay. out enough copies or whatever. Oh, but Nintendo. I remember when, uh, when Fire, <laughs> Fire Emblem Awakening uh, came out on, yeah. on 3DS, it was like to get a physical copy of that was Almost impossible, unless you went to a Best Buy. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like that shouldn't be how this is. Yeah, I mean that's the thing is just I think it was we've all gotten so convenient, right? Is it, I think I, the idea of when people are like I, I remember the days of going to Target. Do you have this game? No shit. Go to Walmart. Do you have this game? No shit. Fucking like going through the mall, right? Store yeah. to store, trying to figure it out, right? But like now it's just such a foregone. Just download it, right? Um, on my phone, buy it, make it automatically download to the PlayStation or Switch, and then there we go, playing it. Boom. Yeah. Grub writes into kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. He says, multiple game stops in the same location is not really a problem. Think about auto dealerships or mattress stores. You often see many of them in the same location, and they are frequently owned by the same people or companies. It's a weird economic anomaly, but stores tend to make more money when they are close to other stores just like them. I don't know if I buy it. I don't believe I, you I, if I, I buy it. I, I, mean, yeah. I, I mean, different mattress stores with different names and different dealerships with different names. Do I want a Toyota or do I want a Honda? That's a different thing. Of, do I want a GameStop or do I want a GameStop? Because yeah. they bought a million other game stores and turned them over. Yeah. I don't know. There, there's a lot more, like, complicated on the the back end, I would say, with that. Like, it's not, it's not apples to apples there. You know? Okay. Thanks, Barrett. You're welcome, Greg. Love you. Love you, too. Uh, also, by the way, Matt the Wob wrote in and said, yeah, you're, Greg, you're right. Servers are console specific. Thank you very much. This is for GTA Online, of course. But now it's time to talk about Destiny, number four in the Roper Report. That's this got idea. a quick shout out at the end yesterday. It's breaking news, but I wanted to give you the full rundown from Bungie themselves. As we get closer and closer to serving up Shadow Keep and New Light, it has become increasingly clear that our releases for the fall would benefit from a bit more time in the oven. Being independent means that the future of Destiny 2 is entirely on our team. It also means that we're agile enough to choose to do what's best for the game and our players, even if it's a hard choice. We wanted to let you, our community, know first that we're changing the date of Sha for Shadowkeep and New Light from September 17th to October 1st. This fall is the first step on our journey for what our team wants Destiny 2 to become. A place where you and your friends can play anytime, anywhere, owning the action MMO and RPG elements that we love about the game and crushing barriers to entry for friends. We just need a bit of extra time to take the first step. We didn't make this decision lightly. We know for some of you, parentheses, us too, Destiny releases are events where you take time off of work or, de or develop a sudden sickness that keeps you from school or work. Parentheses, we get it. A bunch of our team takes some time off to go on their own Destiny jacket quest. Uh, we're sorry for screwing up your plans, and we wanted to share this information as quickly as we could. No one told me this game had jacket quests. Do they got everything you want in there, man? Get in there, get a cool gun. Good for them, man. Of, of course. Bungie, get it. We talk about this all the time. Transparency. And communication. Just be, be up front. Communication. And this is the best type of communication. Also, yeah. not the worst news in the world. It's not like dude. I, both Fran and Andrea celebrated this. I'm yeah. like, oh, thank God. There's so many other things. Like Borderlands is right on top of that. There's so many different games happening in that September, mid September range. That pushing this to October, they were all fine with. Yeah, two weeks. It's like that. If two weeks is going to make the game that much better mm -hmm. and and alleviate that many more complaints that people have when it launches, like that's going to be so good for. Uh, this game and they're, they're making really good points that it's like this they need to put their best foot forward with this update because this is their independent coming out party right yeah like this is them being like look here's this is our destiny now check out what it is check out what it's going to be so I hope that it's fucking awesome and I, I really think that I mean I believe in Bungie I've always believed in Bungie like since the OG days and I think that they've proven that they ha have a very good vision for what destiny what they want Destiny to be, and I think that it's going to take a while to get there fully because yeah. they've, for so many years, had to create the game under Activision, which we all understand had very real implications specific asks and, and things specific and, asks and contractual that, things yeah. that allowed them to make the game in the first place. Yeah. But now they already have all that foundation down. Now they can pivot it go in the direction they want to go and I think in a couple of years it's going to be really good. And I mean that's the thing even about this statement right that they nail. They, they're being open transparent as fast as they can but also being like hey this is because we are in control and we don't want this to not. We don't have to hit anybody's thing right. We know what we're driving for. We know what we want it to be. We can be that and that's the best thing they can do is communicate directly as people. And I think it's really good too that they're not just saying we know what we want it to be. They're saying we know what we want it to be. Here's what we want it to be. Sure. You know, it's like, hey, we want anybody to be able to play anywhere and to be able to jump in and not be intimidated. It's like, cool, great. That's a great vision that you have for this, right? Good on them. 
Good on them indeed, Tim. I can't wait to see how fast it takes Je Fran and Andrea to get that jacket in Destiny, but that's still so far away. If I wanted to know something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grop shops, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. Boo -doo 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 yeah. Out today, Varengi on Xbox One. <laughs> Meow Motors on Xbox One. Right. Madden NFL 20 oh. on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. The right. Church in the Darkness. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. You might remember this one. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff from it. I ran into them, I think, at GDC uh, Mix one time and talked about it, and we talked about it on the shows, and I've done updates on it here and there. I can't remember... I, th I want to say they were in the game showcase. They were in the game showcase. Gen, Gen 1, uh, first one the we ever did. One, yeah. Where, yeah, the idea is that it's a game where uh, your nephew's been kidnapped, or maybe been kidnapped by a cult. Your, your nephew's off the grid in what looks to be a cult, and you have to infiltrate in. And when you do it every time, the variables change. So oh. sometimes the cult leaders aren't bad guys. Sometimes they are. The, 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 so on and so forth. You jump around, you figure it out. Um, as Divine Menace, Xbox One and PC. Burger Chef Tycoon on Switch. Swaps and Traps on Switch. Retro Rockets on PC. Saboteur 2, Avenging Angel on PC. Under the Ground, PC. Armor Clash 3 on PC. And then the Games Guardian Pro XP, the ultimate personal gaming environment, launches in North America. If you're a Kind of Funny uh, Gamescast supporter on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games, you probably remember a few months ago when they came by, showed us uh, the games case, the brand new one here, the Guardian Pro XP. Uh, we actually got one in the office the other day. We did not box. It I looks wanna, hot. I want to put it on Instagram, but I need to edit the videos together. And let me tell you, I just never have any time to do anything. Give me, give me the <laughs> real quick pitch on exactly what it is. Like, how is it different than just a game, old school games, like briefcase looking thing? All uh, right. So the idea with this one is, give Barrett, do you want to bring it up so they can have a visual aid? Uh, yeah. Is that it's a super, first off, it doesn't look ugly. I think okay. the old Vanguard cases yeah. looked pretty ugly, right? Mm -hmm. They look like weird. Fisher Price, like yeah. he looked like an official businessman, like carrying it around. <laughs> That's an exaggeration, but when you see the unboxing, now the joke will make sense. Uh, but it's a giant silver case, so it looks cooler. I think it's okay. it's slimmer, it's very big. But then you open it up, and it's got like a a nice little rack there, a metal rack that actually protects your console. There's a place for you to put your controller in there. There's an accessory bag on the side. But then I think they've built it with the idea in mind that it's the you're on the go streamer case. Yeah. So it's got all these USB ports in the front that give it out power the screens way nicer than usual uh, on top it's got like uh, you can see them up there's those little ridges I forget what they're called but they're like uh, rails that you can then put your you can put your camera on this different rail and slide it in so you can have a camera mounted a light mounted and then that's all going back into it and then there's an HDMI out to go into your computer or whatever streaming device you're is, using is it battery like or is it it's, you, it's AC plug it in? it's AC you yeah. plug it in yeah, yeah. yeah this looks like some Greg Miller ass shit and then the, it does the, for travel it's huge is my yeah, one the, thing the screen is also I think we it's a little over 1080 it's a Go to the 1440 or That's something like that mean. uh yeah it's it, this yeah i was when we were joking around about it uh, when we were booting up I'm like kevin this is better than my tv's like oh yeah i'm like really and i turned it on i was like oh fuck yeah this does look way nicer <laughs> or i think the old one is 720 or something like that yeah, yeah the the idea of for me personally with it right yes 1440p resolution that's a lot more than 1080 uh Still my uh, my thing with it is and then you see if you scroll down bear it and show it to him like there you talk, I'm talking about with all the things rigged up to it right of like I got the camera yeah, I got the lights I got the thing on it uh yeah, for me personally, I don't. I, I I take that game screen with me on the go all the time. And by the way, this is not a paid ad. They did not give it to us. They did not pay for us. I just really like game stuff. I actually bought that screen. You remember that I traveled yeah, with? You've yeah, seen yeah. it. And like, I like that, but I don't like that it's not all in one. So that's the screen. It's my PS4. There's a million different cables for it. The fact that you can pretty much build this thing out and set it all up, I love. And that's how I have it right now at home. It's got the second PS4 in it. So that when I need to break it out to either play co-op or something, Jen, like we're going to do the Borderlands 2 DLC this weekend to get it ready for Borderlands 3. Like I can just swing it out rather than have all these different cables and stuff. Downside to it, of course, is that it still doesn't have the... Kevin and I, the way I would want it, obviously, is that there's just one plug coming out of the side of the case into the thing, but it doesn't do that. I'm sure it's, I, I think we asked him on Gamescast, I forget what the answer was, but it's got, you'll have your PlayStation cable or Xbox cable, and then also the cable for it, so you have to have two plugs to put it into, mm. but it's still the nice idea of swinging it out, opening it up, and two plugs, you're ready to go, Yeah. versus like a bunch of different cool stuff. Cool stuff, man. Yeah. I remember back in my day, back in my Nintendo day. Power would just sell carrying cases for N64. They didn't have screens. They just, nah, they man. just cases. Nintendo Power, they sucked. <laughs> ah, there's also a Dave's Gone Challenge out today if you want to jump on that. You can go to the PlayStation blog. They'll tell you all about it. Uh, new dates for you. Uh, no Man's Sky Beyond is coming out August 14th. Yeah. Uh, Xbox reports with The Bard's Tale 4. 4. 
Director's Cut, and Wasteland 3 on the horizon, it's a fantastic time for Xbox Game Pass RPG fans to go back to where it all began with the Bard's Tales trilogy arriving August 13th and the original post-apocalyptic RPG Wasteland 30th Anniversary Edition later this year. Man, what do I choose? Bard's Tale 4 or No Man's Sky Beyond? Man, you know, I wish it was easy. Do you want to do you want to go into space in VR? Ooh. There you go. See, winner. Winner. Chicken dinner. No Man's Sky Beyond. Play that as well, you know. Really good. Like I, 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 you know, I started up No Man's Sky again recently. It was kind of fueled by the fire of man. That was a lot of fun in VR. Something I definitely want to fuck around with when I get into, mm-hmm. when it comes out the fourteenth. That's cool. Um, then we kind of glossed over this yesterday that they got announced. I forget if we said them though because it was again you're wrong, breaking news kind of stuff. But PlayStation Four early access uh, Modern Warfare beta dates look like this. Early access is September twelfth through the thirteenth. The open beta on PS Four is September fourteenth through the sixteenth. PC, Xbox One, and PS4 or Modern Warfare beta goes like this. Both of these beta sessions include crossplay between the consoles and PC. Uh, early access for PC and Xbox One, open beta for PS4, uh, September 19th through the 20th, and then the open beta. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore. Open beta, September 21st, 23rd. I copied that from an official There's thing. If that makes access. any fucking sense well, to you, go well. ahead, folks. Yeah, I have no idea. But I'm still shocked that the crossplay stuff is the thing. <laughs> Wolf Thorn Seven writes in on a wheels off kind of funny games daily <laughs> to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says hello KFGF. Yep, that's not right. Uh, with the reveal of Call of Duty mo- multiplayer yesterday, how exactly will crossplay work? Uh, will I be able to play with my friends on Xbox? Will I be able to play with my friends on Xbox as well as my home con- as my home console is PS4? Will we be able to create a party together and join matchmaking? Over on a Game Informer article, Activision sent them this official statement. With the launch of Modern Warfare, the team is taking steps to unite the community. First, the team plans for Modern Warfare to be played together across PC and console through crossplay support. End quote. I just want to clear things up if it has not been already. Thank you for everything that you do. Much love, Wolfthorn7. Uh, Barrett, I'm going to need you to actually search around to see if there's any more details. I can speak for the first part here, right? Will I be able to play with my friends on Xbox as my home console is PlayStation 4? Yes, you will. That is confirmed. That is fine. Uh, we, uh, we, we've talked about this in general. We've played it before. Like, it was this weird thing from Judges Week where we, we were able to nominate and Andrea. I talked about it. We played cross-play. I played on PlayStation 4. We played against people on Xbox. We played against people on PC. It was no problem. Unbelievable. Insane and awesome and amazing. Uh, in terms of your thing here, will you be able to create a party and join matchmaking? That's what I don't know. That I haven't seen details on yet officially, and I don't know if they went into that in this uh, multiplayer reveal yesterday. It would get into that weird thing of, theoretically, you should be able to do that based on how Fortnite does it. Fortnite, mm. if you open up your servers, right? And now, granted, everybody's linked by an Epic account there. Right. But on Fortnite, if it, it, Barrett's playing on Switch and I'm playing on mobile and you're playing on PS4, Tim, we can go in there and get into we're on a, we're on the four-man squad team together. Uh, I don't. You can't chat with each other that way, right? Is Barrett, that, no, that's tied yeah, to the no, Epic you account. can. You that ch- is tied to the Epic account. You chat together in game because voice though. Yeah, because right. uh, Switch doesn't have like a voice chat thing but you can still chat with people uh on in Fortnite on the switch you just have to have a microphone but i'm talking between platforms between platforms that's what i'm saying I, if, if ooh, the example i just gave yeah, all yeah, yeah, mm, yeah that i don't know the article that uh talked about the the cross play specifically for here is uh very short just because it kind of broke yesterday yeah and then with the i i don't know if I will be able to find any information on the whole uh, being able to make like a party together like outside of the game and whatnot because I think that you'd would only have to be able to do it inside the game period game. that's a yeah, full yeah, stop yeah. I can tell you that right yeah, now that you're yeah, not yeah. going to be able to take a PlayStation party and hit up uh, Xbox person is Rocket League already cross play yes yeah okay let me uh, let me look into that okay but I know they they don't do voice chat though no hmm. all right hold on Rocket League crossover. So again, I think this is the the burgeoning uh, razor's edge we're on with all these different uh, mm-hmm. cross plays that's happening. Where it's like, I think there's a lot of questions, and I think for a while it's going to be game by game, platform by platform, uh, epic Jericho. username by username. Exactly. Chris Break the Jericho. walls down. Break the walls down. Exactly. That's what's happening. Uh, but for sure, you're going to be able to play with your Xbox friends if you have a PlayStation 4. That's fine. That's guaranteed. What it's going to look like, I don't know. Like I said, when I got it used, it, it was set up for me, but I know that we are doing it. So I don't know. But. And now that multiplayer is officially revealed, you can imagine you'll be getting more of that. 
Tim? Yeah. Are you ready for more reader mail? Yeah. Great. But first, let me tell you about our sponsors. Up first is Third Love. You know, Third Love makes a bunch of great bras and all the kind of honeys are wearing them. Third Love uses data points generated by millions of women who have taken their Fit Finder quiz to design bras with breast size and shape in mind for the perfect fit and premium feel. Third Love offers more than 70 sizes, including their signature half cup sizes. Skip the trip. Find your fit with Third Love's online Fit Finder. Order and try on at home. No more awkward fitting room experiences. Answer a few simple questions to find your perfect fit in 60 seconds. Over 12 million women have taken the quiz so far and it's actually fun and takes less than a minute to complete. Third Love helps you identify your breast size and shape and find styles that fit your body. Plus, there's a 100% fit guarantee. Every customer has 60 days to wear it, wash it, and put it to the test. And if they don't love it, they can return it and Third Love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need. Third Love's team of expert fit stylists are dedicated to finding you your perfect fit. Fit stylists are available every day to help via text, chat, and phone. Uh, plus, returns and exchanges are free and easy. This is hands down the most comfortable bra you'll ever own. It's lightweight. Uh, it's super thin memory phone cups. They mold to your shape and are proprietary to Third Love. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash games now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash games for 15% off today, 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 today. Arcwing24 in Yorong says when doing Fortnite crossplay, you can use in-game voice chat across consoles. That's in-game voice chat, not out-game, PlayStation 4, all that stuff. Again, mm -hmm. Epic, with their whole Epic thing, doing it right. Next sponsor, Upstart. As most of us have found out the hard way, our hard way, getting into debt is easy, getting out is hard, especially if your FICO score isn't great. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just a credit score and offers you a smarter interest rate to help pay off your credit card debt. Uh, when I consolidated all my debt and got a loan, guess what? My rate sucked. This would have been helpful. It wasn't in existence yet, so don't be like me in the past. Be like me in the now. Upstart goes beyond the traditional FICO score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you and understand that. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in a few minutes without affecting your credit score. The best part, once the loan is approved, most people get their funds the very next business day. The next day! Over 200,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards, student loans, or fund their weddings, or even make large purchases. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash KF games to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate takes only a few minutes and it won't affect your credit. That's upstart.com slash KF games, 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 games. Upstart. Uh, so I, I, the most I could pull from was the Rocket League blog uh -huh. uh, at the beginning of the year, January 14th, by Jeremy Dunham. Uh, Jeremy Dunham! Uh, who says, what about uh, cross-platform parties? In our first update this year, which I assume has happened already, we will release our cross-platform party system, which allows you to partner up with friends on any platform with the push of a few buttons. So yeah, I think it's just one of those things that's going to have to depend on game to game with that kind of stuff with uh, parties and, and all that good stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you got to imagine they'll do it for Call of Duty. Party up there? Yeah, yeah. I feel like you got to. You know, I feel like, yeah, like, I feel like mode, why would you like do it you if you couldn't, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're just going to invite people and break up. I feel like they're on top of it from yeah. that. Yeah, like yeah. Team Deathmatch, I can imagine. Like, yeah, that's not super important, but there are modes that like that are built around having to communicate with each other. So, Squatting yeah. up. The power is there. Squat up. Yep. Power of the squat uppers. Uh, and then hold on one second to GC the second says Rocket League has voice chat in the game on PC but not cross platform. It's a mm -hmm. console restriction that you have that you have to have removed. You have to pay more from what people have said. Interesting. So there you go. Huh. Epic throwing on the Epic Bucks. Yeah. Jeremy Dunham closing his little purse and saying no. Okay. Not today. It's a really little purse. Well, I want to say coin <laughs> purse, and then people are gonna think ball sacks. And I don't mean that, I mean an actual coin purse. I've Which never, part's confusing you, Tim? I've what never, part of that? <laughs> the balls part. You yeah. ever call your balls the old clone purse? No. No. Uh, I'm not wrong here, everybody. I'll tell you, you right now. Go to college slash you're wrong. Let Have you know. ever heard of balls? Be, your, uh, human male balls being called the coin purse? The scrotum being called the coin purse? It's coin purse slang. Hey, Barrett's doing here. What do you got for me? There you go. Bam. Right there. The second one. It's right there. You didn't even have to click on this. But yeah, yep, testes. Uh, not sad. If you go back to the Google thing. Go on. Yeah, see. Noun, coin purse, uh, a small bag or pouch designed for carrying money, particularly coins. Slang, testicles. Thank you, everybody. 
Informal, a type of theatrical performance undergarment used to hide male genitalia by stuffing it into a pouch with a drawstring to simulate being nude. That's probably where uh, this line came from. You know? No way. It's, it came from somebody looking at a set of balls being like, that looks like my coin purse. And like, what the uh, fuck? Uh, who, who has a coin purse? <laughs> Old women. My grandmother had coin Your purses. Your grandmother has a coin purse? <laughs> She's dead now. Wow. Wow. Mao 45 writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says question for Tim on Friday. Yeah. What's up, Greg and Tim? Long time listener. First time crawling out of my comfort zone. Tim, I'd like to ask you how you feel about microtransactions being introduced to CTR. That's Crash Team Racing a month after release. Angry Greg voice. Was this a setup all along? And angry Greg voice. Activision pulled the same trick with Call of Duty last year. After the reviews rolled in, they rolled out their MTX. That's microtransaction scheme and all hell broke out is MTX free online games going forward gonna be a lost cause. Also, did you end up getting did you end up in the five percent last pre and have you platinum the game yet? Cheers. I, I did not do either of those things. Um yeah, no, this was totally a setup and it's really shady and bullshit, quite frankly. Uh so crash if somebody's racing, missed it. The the Grand Prix mode is uh brilliant, honestly. Like when when Crash Team Racing uh, remake first came out, Nitro Field, whatever. Um, I was very impressed with the amount of content that the game had and the um, the lengths to which the developers seem to have poured a lot of love into it, into wanting people to continue going back and playing the game. Sure. <clears throat> it was very cool to see them put the challenges in, have a lot of challenge, put this plan out of being like, look, there's going to be all these different Grand Prix throughout the summer that you're going through. You have to grind and do a bunch of different daily challenges and stuff like this is a, a especially for a remake of an old kart racer. What a great, great system to put in here to, to, to really make it a, a valuable purchase. Right. Um, and it was very exciting for me for the idea of what a new kart racer, like a modern kart racer could be like when Mario Kart nine comes out, like they better learn from this shit. Yeah. They better not learn from this shit though. It started off grindy. <laughs> it started off like it, it was difficult to unlock all the stuff to the point where, like, I think it wasn't worth my time. Like, it there was to go through stuff, and unlock, like the different like costumes and and racers and and things. Where like that stuff's cool. The amount of grind you, I would have to do to get through there's like a little like bar you like load as you get like your wumpa coins or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was just like, all right, I, I, this is cool. I'm happy it's here. I'm gonna wait until it's a bit simpler to get the stuff. Now. You can pay to get that stuff. And it's just like, well, it was annoying to me that it was grindy before, but I'd made the choice not to grind. I get people wanting to. Now it's like, oh, no, no, no. It was that grindy because you're trying to fucking get money from people. And they were so shady about being like, no, there's no tra microtransactions. And now there is. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you can't claim that as your your stance on like, look, we did all this right. And then it's like, no, you didn't, though. Like, especially so soon after after its release. Gotcha. So you, this is what, this is the argument uh, we have, not ar argument. This is the conversation that came up yesterday, right, on a games cast about Wolfenstein slash Assassin's Creed and microtransactions, where I was like, who cares? And it was like, well, is it built to grind it out and be shitty if you didn't do it right? You think that this, 100%. Is, this was bit, built this, to be grindy and shitty? And then, okay, okay. Yeah. And it's like, I, they could have been built to just require a lot of gameplay yeah. you know and like that again isn't for everyone it's not for me but i understand why they would do that but when you add this on top of it it's like no nah, man like that it's this is just a straight up no this is bullshit and gotcha. this is like this is microtransactions at their worst wow wow i really think so holy like, shit okay because the, they're coming into this thing that didn't have them and the thing that everyone was already kind of like hmm if they add microtransactions it's gonna be here and then boom so Gotcha. That sucks. Not happy about it. That super sucks. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize it was that big of a deal. Especially because the game's so good. Yeah. And the game has so much TLC in it. And there's so much content there. But, you know, it, this makes me not want to, to go back for the Grand Prix ever. Wow. That sucks, Tim. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. Will you go back to the Grand Prix, though? I don't know. Mm. Honestly, I want to play Spyro, though. But. Yeah, exactly. Well, that sucks. All right. Well, good to know. <laughs> Where do I want to take you next, Tim? Oh, this is one up your alley. Fendi writes into patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames and says, Hey guys, it's been almost three months since PlayStation's last state of play. There was about a month and a half between the first and second one. Do you guys think we might be nearing the third state of play with the close release of Death Stranding and Medieval? Thanks and have a great day, Fendi. Yeah, we're overdue. Yeah. I you would thought think, about it. You, I th I, you think, yeah, I hadn't either. It's been so busy and crazy, but I would say you what? Maybe Jesus. 
the next one you do, I feel like would be another, your last look at Death Stranding, right? Try to lead with that as like a cool thing, but then have Last of Us know. release date on it or something like that, you think? Or somewhere in there? Like you, I, Concrete I, Genie needs a push probably too. I, I yeah. don't think they're going to do that. You don't think so? Yeah. You're the king of uh, what uh, Nintendo Directs and but State look, of Plays looking do. Looking at State of Plays so far, it's like they're not really used as vehicles to do final previews for games. Right. So far, we've only had two. So, like, finding patterns is difficult. Well, but it wasn't Days Gone was in the first one, right? And it was like, hey, this is about to come out. Look at all this cool shit. This is your yeah, last but, look. like, I, I wouldn't say that that was the feature of that. No, that, no, it that wasn't. Was you're just right. like, I, if it, that was just I just a feel trailer. like if you have, hey, we have Death Stranding stuff, you're going to promote it as, hey, Death Stranding, State of Play is coming up, your last look at it. I feel, and yeah, I feel like you it. get one more trailer or whatever. Yeah, a trailer. I just don't think that that's going to be like, it's. I don't think it's it a deep be. dive. Here's how it works. No, 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 yeah. no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I meant like, yeah, you got a trailer that they're packaging, then around it, cool announcements, things you might ignore, Concrete Genie. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's a little too early for The Last of Us. Even, even beyond, maybe. Mm. The problem mm. with The Last of Us is I still want to see them end one of these things with. Last of Us and it's the, gets the release date right. Yeah, but I don't think it behooves them to do that before Death Stranding's out. Yeah, right. I don't think you want to take away Death Stranding's you yeah. know clout. Or, but, yeah, it, but, but even just thinking with like their major like uh, like kind of PlayStation franchises like God of War's uh, release date was announced at like the beginning Boy. of 2018. Like they didn't. And I feel like sure. they only announced that like right. Three if, or four if you if it's not uh, which it isn't. Yeah. Last of Us is not coming this year. I was right. Uh, if it was, I mean, yeah, you don't want to talk about next year when you still have things going on right, this year, especially right. with holiday coming in. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised that it, whatever, whenever the first state of play is next year, I wouldn't be surprised if we get that, though. I mean, Nintendo typically has a big January direct. What? I wonder where if Sony wants to kind of like battle that battle it, separate from it. I don't know what the strategy is going to be there, mm. but. It's exciting times. I love State of Plays. I love Direct. You think we'll get one soon? Are you, we're going to get one this year? To. We're okay. going to get one more this year. Okay. Yeah. I just don't know when. But it's just PlayStation's in a weird place where they, they don't have that many games left to talk about. So you don't want to over talk about the same games. You know, with you figure, training and all so that. So are we thinking, let's think here for a second. But the State of Plays also focus heavily on third party titles. Sure. Here's you know, what if I get crazy with you? I get would assume there's crazy. no PSX again this year, mm. right? Yeah. Just because why would there be? They hate us. Shuhei hates us. He loves to change our name, so that's nice. So do you think then, does it make sense in some regard to do Game Awards announce Last of Us release date there? Or do you think mm. it does Game Awards do a Last of Us trailer and then say there's a state of play tomorrow? Hmm. You think they do it because uh, you have to think in some regard. Are they thinking of state of cl- plays as quarterly? Is, was there a spring? Was two months, right? I mean, so far. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like you figure the spring one was kind of late. You kind of could give it the second one being a summary one, right? I forget when it was. Oh, Barry, can you give me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a, a time on when the last one was the actual date. And then from there, what if you went, you have one now in the f- or whatever. Some. Mm, Fall, I, I don't winter. Think, I don't think that they're gonna. I mean, it's latch it's, on. St- it's gonna be like Nintendo Directs, where it's like it happens, it happens, it happens, it happens, or it doesn't. There's not a like regularly scheduled like seasonal thing. It's just when there's things to talk about, they talk about them. The first one was March 25th, and then the last one was May 9th. Okay. I mean, we also have to look at it. Death Stranding got its release date not in a state of play. It was just a random right. Twitch stream and. You know, trailer drop. Like, yeah, I can imagine Last of Us Part Two also doing that. Sure, it's big enough to be its own thing that they push. You know, yeah. And so far, Sony hasn't used one big thing to promote other things around it with State of Play. They could, they probably should, but hey, it's not my coin purse. They're taking the money out of. Kind of funny. Yeah. Com slash you're wrong. Uh, a smartass writes in and says regarding the coin purse talk. Why do you think it's called the money shot? Ah. Well played, sir. Well played. I have a lot to think about tonight. I have a lot to think about. Uh, Nintendo Tim writes into patreon.com/slash kind of funny games. What? I said he's a pervert. Nintendo Tim? 
Or the money shot no, guy. the money shot guy. Okay. Nintendo Tim, probably as well. <laughs> Every Tim I know is a pervert. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Sorry, it's a bit of a long one. On a show earlier this week, when Andrea was on, 730, question mark, she mentioned how she was curious about a used game system that would grant owners of discs a digital copy of the game so they could play the game straight from the hard drive without needing the disc in the system. Uh, though the disc would need to be kind of like a backup authentication method. The thing is, this was how Microsoft originally pitched the idea of the Xbox One. The discs would be locked to your account and your system, and if you wanted to sell the game, you'd have to go to an authorized reseller, say GameStop or Best Buy, and they'd take the disc while presumably removing the authentication against your account so someone else could use it. This would also uh, put more money back into the developer po developer's pockets, since some kind of portion of the resell would go to them. Uh, with this absolute shitstorm that came up during the E3 conference, Microsoft backed down and reversed these changes a week later. Uh, we're now six years past this, and once and this once controversial idea is coming up as a nice to have feature. If Microsoft took failed ideas from the original version of the Xbox One and pitched them at next E3 for Scarlet, do you think the community at large would be more willing to accept them these days, or will we not see something like this for another generation or so? I don't think that it, it's going to happen like that. No? No. Okay. Video games are just, they're, they're too expensive to risk losing out on multiple purchases. Like when you look at, at Blu-ray movies, right? If you buy a physical copy of Avengers, you also get a digital copy. What does that mean to most people? Not that they have two copies of the movie, that they do and one of their friends do. Yeah. Right? And I think that with video games, $60 titles, there needs to be more of a restriction on on how you can pass around multiple copies of it and the original way that xbox pitched it would cause that right where it's like it is locked you, you either have the disc or you have the thing you, you don't have both um but people get really up in arms about that type of stuff with yeah. the drm and all yep. that and i just don't think that there's a, a good way for them to market that and explain that it makes it sound like it's a good thing for consumers yep so i think that they're going to shy away from it and 100%. i can't imagine playstation wanting to no. go down that path and that's it, the it's going to require one of those guys to come forward and make it happen. If Microsoft took the failed ideas and pitched them uh, to the community at large, would they be more willing to accept them these days? No. With all due respects, uh, with all due respects, I'm tired, it's been a week. With all due respect, uh, gamers slash human beings uh, uh, are not any more level-headed now than they were then. It, it, you, it, people, everybody, everybody hates change. When something gets announced as change, there's always fear that it's going it, to... I already like it how it is. Change could really fuck things up, right? That's what we saw out of the Xbox One family cloud ecosystem thing they pitched back then, right? And I stand by, like, especially where Xbox is in this generation, it would have been way more interesting. To, I would love more than anything to be able to open up the multiverse and just look in and see what happened if they would have gone like, listen, we hear you guys don't like this, but we're going to prove why. We believe in this. Here's why we believe in it. We're going to make you believe in it, too. Mm -hmm. We think we're going somewhere that in six years, people are going to be on podcasts being like, this is a cool way to do it. We're going to get there. We're future proofing. We're not looking backwards. We're looking forward because they already got, you know, beat so bad this generation by PlayStation 4, right? And again, Xbox One did fine. I'm not saying like they suck. I'm just saying like in terms of units sold, right? It would be awesome to see what would have happened if they just committed. And they're just like, hey, man. We're going to make you believe. But when yeah. they back down, that's when they kill themselves. People always want to go back to it being an exclusives argument, it being this, that, and the other about why Xbox is behind this race. It's because they didn't believe in what they were selling. And if you don't believe in what you're selling, why the fuck would anybody else believe in it? Mm -hmm. That's what killed them, this generation. I'd love to see Don Matrix still in charge of Xbox being like, nah, man, we believe. And we're gonna. this is what it is. And this is the vision. And maybe they're completely out of business. Maybe it would have been a horrible deal. Yeah. Maybe that makes Skynet. I don't know. Would have been interesting to see. Maybe they were ahead of their times. Maybe they weren't. Who knows? Tim? Yeah. It's time to squad up. Please. This is where people write into patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Give me their name, username, platform of choice, and why they need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find everybody. and Everybody plays games together. Today, Will needs help on PlayStation 4. Wheels. Well. PS4. Name is Torbanok. T-O-R-B-A-N-N-O-K. What's up, best friends? I'm getting back into Destiny 2 in preparation for Shadow Keep, and I am looking to squad up with some best friends to get things done. So, I usually play in the afternoons and early evenings EST, that's Eastern Time, and would love to meet more of the kind of funny community. Hit me up, and let's be guardians, parentheses, of the galaxy, together. P.S. KFAF sucks. He speaks the truth! Woo! Tim, would you like to say that KFAF sucks? I'm so I'm like a neutral. You, you know suck. what I mean? Yeah, I, I sure don't why, like is, it. They make fun of you all the time on it. Oh, I'm sure they you do. Should yeah, probably they talk a back. lot of shit about you. Yeah. But yeah. enough of KFAF. 
Mm-hmm. Tim, yeah. this, of course, is a very special episode of Kind of Funny Games oh Daily. God, right. We've completed our 500th episode yes. of Kind of Funny yes. Games Daily. 500 episodes. And, as usual, Kenny Baloo writes in with the stats. Kenny Baloo. Today! Friday, August 2nd, 2019 is the 500th episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily. Congratulations. It's an amazing milestone and truly a testament to your hard work. Thank you for making this show a priority for us, parentheses, amazingly, even on some national holidays. As I did for the previous 100 episode milestones, I wanted to write in with some stats and fun facts about our favorite daily video game news show. I threw in a lot of info here, so I, edit, I always edit. You know how I do it. Uh, there have been a total of 76 hosts of the show. Wow. For regulars, oh, wow. the rankings are... Number one, Greg, with 370 shows. My Number God. two, Tim, with 176 shows. Number three, Andrea, rest in peace, he put in parentheses, future-proofing, 156 shows. Number four, Gary, 74 shows. Number five, Jared, rest in peace, 65 shows. Number six, Fran, 35 shows. Number seven, Danny, rest in peace, 23 shows. Number eight, Andy, 11 shows. Number nine, Barrett, two shows. Ten is Nick, with one show. <laughs> I'm in the I, top I'm ten, wow. kind of shocked that Andrea's that close to me. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised that Gary is that high. I thought I I, I don't know. I, I guess I didn't think you'd be two. There's so many weeks where you get bumped for the an up and comer. There's you get so many around. weeks you're not here. Yeah, <laughs> what are you talking that's about? true. I'm here all the Which time. means I'm on like five days in a row. Don't cry or me a fucking you know river, I mean? all right? Yeah. I don't know. Those just... two episodes, I think both with Tim. Oh shit! Yeah, they were good. When you were gone and dead, and we were scared for your life. Yeah, I would. I would think that Andrew would be like a bit more behind me. I think she used to be. The last time we did one of these things, I think it was a bigger. Gap. It probably was what better in the ass. Like I gotta get going. I gotta yeah. catch up. Yes. And then she's like, you know what? I'm gonna quit and get yeah, out. Fuck it. For the guests, Anthony Gallegos, uh, Chastity from Gamespot, Mike uh, Snowbike, Mike Cheeks Jr., Belinda Garcia, and Imran Khan have all hosted three times. Oh. Anthony Carboni, Christian Phillips, Brittany uh, from What's Good, Cat Bailey, uh, Aiden Strahan, uh, David Jagnew. I always fuck it. I'm sorry, David. Uh, Mike. Mike Mahardy, Steve Saylor, and Nathan Brandt have all hosted twice. Fifty-one other people have hosted once, I, which that, is crazy. See, that is the crazy. The That's a crazy set. Different hosts. Also, Portillo has been on the show nine times. Wow! So eight times more than Nick. Totally justified. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give you the top three combos. Hosting combos go like this: Greg and Andrea, 114 shows. Greg and Tim, 98 shows. Greg and Gary, 46 shows. Wow! At number 20, Snowbike Mike and Cheeks Jr. with two shows. <laughs> Big fan of that one. <laughs> Big fan of that one. Um, I'm, now I'm into the fun facts. I'm trying to find the funner ones. Yeah. I, I'll be 100% honest with you. Today got away from me. I was behind on planning the show. So it wasn't until I got here and like the second you were wrong was like, it's the 500th show. I'm like, oh yeah. Fuck right. Kenny wrote in with all the information and I didn't put it in there or whatever. Uh, you bought a cake for us? I mean, kind of. You bought a cake for the 500th episode, Kevin? That's so sweet. Yeah. So sorry. yeah, I want the cake. Uh, the show is, is run by one of the hosts who reads the Roper Report, segment transitions, etc. Since the show began on June 19th, 2017, Greg has run most shows a whopping 369 times. Tim's run the show 60 times. Andrea 24 times. Uh, Jared 23 times. Fran 18. Snowbike Mike twice. Danny slash Chastity slash Cheeks Jr. One show each. <laughs> Uh, some interesting facts from the first 500 episodes. Uh, the first four shows use the old kind of funny games daily logo. The new logo has been on the TV every episode since, except for the seven shows with a close up camera angle where the TV was not visible. Got it. You, Kenny, I don't know how you keep these stats together, I but know, I love oh it. God. It's insane, right? Is there any stats about my jingle? Uh, let's get there. He, he, there have been seven shows without a handshake at the end. Uh, Andy went 166 oh shows between hosting, the most of any regular guest. Uh, the LED wall background, the LED wall background, and TV on the front of the desk almost always show the KFGD uh, background and logo. A few notable exceptions are D- D- Danny's last show when the background was Irish themed. Uh, Kevin is Zordon. <laughs> Jared's first show when the background was Jared's Patreon page. Happy to anniversary to you. Happy anniversary! Games daily. Woo! 500 episodes! Happy! That's just Andrea's cake from yesterday! Happy! No. It's happy! No. Yay. 500 episodes, everybody. Thank you so much for making this happen. You have a whole bunch of records, Andy. I don't know if you heard. On uh, Kind of Funny Games Andy daily. went 166 episodes between hosting, the most of any regular guest. Did you call it a regular? <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> I'm no, good right now. No, Thank no. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it out. Jesus, God. Uh, do, 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 do,
Alcohol, though not typically a part of uh, KFGD, was consumed a few times on the show. <laughs> Tim and Andrea take a shot of Jameson and a pickleback March 16th, 2018 to celebrate St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Greg and Andrea drink wine for National Wine Day on May 25th, 2018. Greg and Gary drink champagne slash in the strike through sparkling wine to celebrate the PSN name change announcement on October 10th, 2018. And then Tim and Cool Greg take a shot of Fernet on November 5th, 2018 to cover a late extra life donation. God. Some fun uh, notes from f- some fun notes for some of the hosts. Greg has dressed down in a T-shirt for 66 shows. He's currently on a 20-show streak for wow. not being dressed up as host. The total does not count the time the days Greg wore a Christmas sweater or Ghostbuster outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, a Christmas sweater or, or a, a Ghostbusters outfit. Andrea first said, "What's good?" as an opening line on October 12, 2017. Uh, Gary seemingly tried to break up Andrea and John's friendship with Greg by forcing Greg to choose who he would be friends with in their theoretical divorce. <laughs> Greg swiftly dodges the line of questioning. Phew. Uh, Tim finally broke down and did the release date jingle on March 6, 2018 after refusing to do it on the 22 shows he ran before. Gary drifted off into space while Greg was reading a question on March 7, 2018. Jared introduced Angry Jared voice during listener mail on July 25th, 2018. On Greg's birthday in 2018, the guys had a cake on set. Tim left his phone next to the cake and 29 minutes into the show, a piece of cake toppled onto Tim's phone. <laughs> Tim, started, Tim started screaming, no, very similar to Darth Vader. That's my favorite fun fact. <laughs> Andrea first repeated an outfit on October 26, 2017, wow. her 37th show. Oh, my God. God. Jared performed an acapella version of the intro sh- song, uh, which was used on three occasions in January 2019, while the real intro was broken. Yeah. Yep. And then both Fran and Gary hosted three times before being announced as an official KFGD host. So, continuing this logic, who will be the next full time host? Anthony Gaios, Chastity, Snowbike Mike, Cheeks Jr., Belinda Garcia, or Imran Khan? Wow. Seriously, thank you guys so much for your hard work over the past, or the last 500 episodes in two years. Five Here's to the next 500. 500 episodes, man. 500 hours. Of this. Way Jingles. more than that. Thanks, Gary and Jared. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for 500 episodes. A special thank you, of course, to Kenny uh, Baloo, who puts these together every 100 Kenny episodes. Baloo. Kenny, please go and put all this up on the Kind of Funny subreddit so people can read the, the much more detailed stuff I didn't even get into. Uh, as I hope you all know, uh, getting to do this show is a dream come true for all of us, and we are privileged to be part of your life each and every day. So thank you for letting us into your ears, your eye holes, wherever you do it, whatever Coin van person. you're driving right now, daughter in the back, just learning about coin purses. God. Sorry about that. I never think about the no. kids have to listen to it. You know what I mean? No. And then you meet them at the kids. meet and greets. I meet these little kids meet that come up at the meet and greets. Yeah. Sorry, you had to hear all this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Day. Oh, there's a fucking you're wrong idea. Yeah. Uh, what do we do get wrong today? <laughs> oh, it's not bad at all. Um. Kayla says, here's a new release by no means a new game. Get Alan Week wait uh, it's a deal of the day, actually, I think. Uh get Alan Wake for free on the Epic Games Store starting today. Um Kebab says, getting Spyro next month should be easy. Usually you have to... You usually have to... I think he's talking about the, tr- the trophies. I don't know what that means. Uh, and then K. Wally said... Oh, he corrects the math from Kenny. K. Wally says, Greg said that Pertilla had been on the show eight times more than Nick, when in fact nine. it's nine times, because nine times one is nine. You can take it up with Kenny the stat man, all right? That's not on me. Yeah, I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the 500th episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of it. Remember, if you like it, head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where you can toss us a few bucks, be on the show, get the games cast early, which is up right now, ad-free with the pre and the post-show. Um, if you've got no bucks, toss our way, no big deal, of course. Games Daily is live, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Live later, youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, podcast services around the globe. Hosting for next week looks like this. Monday, it's me and Tim. Tuesday, it is me and Rico. Ferreria from geekaholics.com. Uh, Wednesday, it's me and Gary Witta. Thursday, it's me and Andrea. Friday, it's me and Tim. The Games Cast is Thursday, August 8th at 2 p.m. Uh, it's right now scheduled to be me, uh, Fran, and Andrea. However, I noticed that I had it in my notes on the public page for everybody, for all, or whatever, the, the host page as Wednesday. So I need to verify with, somehow move back to Thursday when I was, when Why I, am I not on it? Tim's uh, on it. Oh. Because we're going to kill you. Jesus, that's for, how we're telling them. For the 500th episode, yeah. That's how we celebrate? Sacrificial right. uh, oh, celebration. Shit. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>